In section 10.6, we're looking at radical equations and problem solving. Our objectives are to solve equations that contain radical expressions and use the Pythagorean theorem to model problems. We're going to solve each of these radical equations, and whenever we're solving equations, we definitely want to make sure we check our solutions. So let's begin with the square root of 4x equals 2. To solve this equation, we, are, we want to get rid of the square root sign. And the proper way to do that is by squaring both sides. So we take our original equation and we square the left side of the equation and square the right side of the equation. When we do that, the square root of 4x becomes, that quantity squared becomes just 4x, and the right side we get 4. By dividing both sides by 4, we get x is equal to 1 as our solution. But we always want to check our answers by taking the 1 and plugging it back into the original equation for x. So we have the square root of 4 times 1. Does that equal 2? Where the square root of 4 times 1 is the same thing as the square root of 4, which does equal 2. So we know that x equals 1 is a solution to that radical equation. Let's do the same process for example b. The square root of the quantity x plus 1 is equal to 7. We can solve this by squaring both sides. I'm going to square the left side and square the right side as long as the radical is by itself. And now when we do that, we get the square root of x plus 1, that quantity squared. The square power and the square root sign are inverses, so they cancel out. And we're left with just x plus 1 on the left side and 49 on the right side. Now we can subtract 1 from both sides to get x equals 48. And as always, we want to check our answer by plugging the value back into the original equation for x to get the square root of 48 plus 1 is equal to 7, and the square root of 48 plus 1 is the same thing as square root of 49, which does equal 7. When we get to example c, we have the square root of 3x equals a negative 6. Considering that we're looking at the principal square roots being positive numbers, and we have our equation the square root of 3x equals a negative 6, we can say that this has no real solution. Because of how we define the square root of the 3x equals a positive number. In example D, we have the square root of the quantity 5x plus 6 plus 2 equals 8. Before we square both sides, it's important to isolate the radical. Get that radical sign by itself. So we are going to first subtract 2 from each side of the original equation so that we get on the left side the square root of the quantity 5x plus 6, and on the right side we get 6. Now we're in the position to square both sides because we've got the radical by itself. And by doing that, the square root of the quantity squared those are inverses, so we simplify the left side to 5x plus 6 and the right side to 36. Now we want to subtract 6 from both sides to get 5x equals 30, and then we divide both sides by 5 to get x equals 6. And as always, we want to check by plugging this answer back into the original equation for x. So we have the square root of the quantity 5 times 6 plus 6 plus 2, does that equal 8? Well, the square root of 5 times 6 is 30, and 30 plus 6 is the square root of 36. So the square root of 36, which is 6, 6 plus 2 does equal 8. So we know that x equals 6 is a solution to that radical equation. In example E, we have the cube root of 6x equals negative 4. Now it's okay to have the cube root equal a negative value because cubed roots can be either positive or negative. So we want to isolate the radical, which we've done already, and in order to get rid of the cubed root symbol, we want to raise both sides to the third power. Raise both sides to the third power, so the cubed root and the third power are inverses, and the left side simplifies to 6x, and the right side we get negative 64. Now we can divide both sides by 6 to get x is equal to negative 64 over 6, but we can reduce that fraction.
to negative 32 over 3. We can check our answer by plugging back into the original equation where we have the cubed root of 6 times negative 32 over 3. We want to know if that does equal negative 4. And the 6 times negative 32 over 3 does simplify to negative 64. And the cubed root of negative 64 is negative 4. So we know that x equals negative 32 over 3 is a solution to that radical equation. In example f, we have the cubed root of the quantity 3x plus 4 minus 4 equals 0. Before we decide to raise both sides to a power, we want to isolate the radical. In order to do that, we're going to add 4 to both sides of this equation. And we end up with the cubed root of the quantity 3x plus 4 on the left side and 4 on the right side. Now we can raise both sides to the third power. Since the cubed root and the third power are inverses, the left side simplifies to 3x plus 4, and the right side is 4 to the third, which is 64. Now we can subtract 4 from both sides of this equation to get 3x equals 60, and then by dividing both sides by 3, we get x is equal to 20. Now, as always, we want to check our solution by plugging in that answer back into the original equation for x. So we get the cubed root of 3 times 20 plus 4, and then minus 4. We want to make sure that that is equal to 0. And under the radical, we have 3 times 20, which is 60, and 60 plus 4 is 64. So the cubed root of 64 is 4, and 4 minus 4 is equal to 0. So we know that x equals 20 is a solution to that radical equation. Now example g, we have two radicals in the equation. In order to solve this radical equation, we want to isolate one of the radicals. And the one on the left is already isolated. So we have the square root of the quantity 4x plus 1 on the left and 3 plus the square root of the quantity x minus 2 on the right. We can square both sides of the original equation. But when you square both sides, the square root of 4x plus 1 raised to the second power, those are inverses. So on the left side, we get 4x plus 1. On the right side, we need to square this quantity, 3 plus the square root of x minus 2 times 3 plus the square root of x minus 2. And we need to use the FOIL process to simplify. This is going to involve quite a few steps here. So on the left side, we still have 4x plus 1. And then if we do the first, outer, inner, and last, the first we get 3 times 3 is 9. The outer we get plus 3 times the square root of x minus 2. The inner is plus 3 times the square root of x minus 2. And the last is the square root of x minus 2 times the square root of x minus 2, which simplifies to x minus 2. Let's simplify the right side of the equation by combining like terms. On the left side, we still have 4x plus 1. On the right side, we have 9 and minus 2 are constants. We can add those together to get 7. And on um, the, the 3 times the radical x plus minus 2 plus 3 times the radical x minus 2, that's going to be plus 6 times the radical x minus 2, and then plus x. Now we want to isolate the radical that we have left here. So we are going to then subtract x from both sides of the equation and subtract 7 from both sides of the equation so that we can isolate that other radical. And we get on the left side 4x minus x is 3x and 1 minus 7 is minus 6. On the right side we have 6 times the square root of x minus 2. Now we can square both sides. We have isolated the radical. We do have a 6 out in front. We can simplify that, or we can leave it for now. When we square both sides, we are squaring this binomial. So remember that this is going to be 3x minus 6 times 3x minus 6 on the left side. And the right side, we want to square both the 6 and the square root. So that's going to be 36 times x minus 2 on the right side. 
Let's simplify the left side by doing the first outer inner last. The first we get 9x squared. The outer is minus 18x and the inner is minus 18x. So if those are like terms, it's going to be minus 36x plus 36 on the left side. And by distributing, we get 36x minus 72 on the right side. Here we have a quadratic equation. We want to solve this by simplifying. We can um, solve the quadratic by setting everything equal to zero and then factoring. And we can do that by subtracting 36x from both sides of the equation and adding 72 to both sides of the equation so that we do end up with a zero on the right side of the equation. When we do that, we get 9x squared minus 72x plus 108 is equal to zero. We have a quadratic equation. Now we can solve this quadratic equation by factoring. Notice that all of the coefficients are multiples of 9, so you can factor out a 9, the GCF, to get 9 times the quantity x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals 0. Now we can factor that trinomial by looking at the factors of positive 12 that will add up to negative 8, and we get x minus 6 is a factor and x minus 2 is a factor. Now using the zero factor property, we're going to set each factor equal to zero to get x minus 6 equals zero and x minus 2 is equal to zero. So then we solve and we get x equals 6 and x equals 2. These are our two possible solutions. We do want to check to make sure they both work by plugging each one into the original equation. When you check x equals 6, we get on the left side of the original equation the square root of 4 times 6 plus 1, which is the square root of 24 plus 1 is 25. Does that equal the right side, which is 3 plus the square root of x minus 2, or 6 minus 2? Does that equal 3 plus the square root of 4? Well, 25 is, the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 4 is 2, so 3 plus 2 does equal 5. So we know x equals 6 is a solution to that radical equation. We also need to check x equals 2. Back into the original equation, we get the square root of 4 times 2 plus 1 on the left side. Does that equal 3 plus the square root of, of 2 minus 2 on the right side? On the left side simplifies, we get the square root of 4 times 2 plus 1, or 8 plus 1, square root of 9, which we know is 3. And on the right side, we have 3 plus the square root of 0, which is also equal to 3. So we know x equals 2 is also a solution to that radical equation. We've got two solutions to that radical equation. It does involve a, a, quite a few steps, isolating the radical, squaring both sides, and then solving the resulting quadratic equation, and finally checking your work. In example i, we have another radical equation with a radical on the left and a radical on the right. We do want to isolate one of the variables and the one on the right is already isolated. So when we set up our first step, we are going to square both sides. Make sure you square the entire quantity on the left and the entire quantity on the right. When you are squaring, remember that squaring a binomial, you can set it up so that it's a binomial times a binomial and using the first outer inner last. You get um, the first, you get square root of x times the square root of x, the square root of x squared, which is x, and then the outer is plus three radical x, the inner is also plus three radical x, so that simplifies to plus six radical x plus nine on the left side of the equation. When we square the left side, we end up with x plus six radical x plus nine, and when we square the right side, the square root and the square are inverses, so the right side is x plus 21. Now we still have another radical left in our equation, so we want to get that radical by itself. We can do that by subtracting x on both sides of the equation and subtract 9 on both sides of the equation so that we get on the left side just 6 square root of x is equal to 21 minus 9, which is 12. And now we can divide both sides by 6 
to get the square root of x is equal to 2. Now when we square both sides here, because we have that radical isolated, we end up with x equals 4. Now we can check our answer by plugging x equals 4 back into the original equation for x. Does the square root of 4 plus 3 equal the square root of 4 plus 21? Well, the square root of 4 is 2, and 2 plus 3 is 5. And on the right side, since the quantity 4 plus 21 is under the radical, it's the square root of 25, which is also equal to 5. So we know that x equals 4 is a solution to that radical equation. In example j, we have the square root of 4x minus 3 on the left side and the square root of x plus 6 on the right side. We have two radicals in this equation and both of them are isolated. So we can go ahead and square both sides of this equation. The result of taking the square root of something squared, those are inverses, so the left side simplifies to x minus 3 and the right side simplifies to x plus 6. We have a nice equation that we can simplify by subtracting x from both sides and adding 3 to both sides of this equation to get 3x is equal to 9. And then we divide both sides by 3 to get x equals 3. As always, we want to check our answer by plugging it back into the original equation for x. So we have under the radical on the left, 4 times 3 minus 3. And on the, under the radical on the right, we have 3 plus 6. So 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 3 is 9. We have the square root of 9 on the left and the square root of 9 on the right. So 3 does equal 3. And x equals 3 is a solution to that radical equation. In example L, we have the cube root of 7x minus 2 on the left equals the cube root of x plus 8 on the right. Now since we have isolated the radical on both sides of the equation, here instead of squaring both sides, to the inverse of the cube root is to take both sides and raise it to the third power. So those are inverses and the left side simplifies to 7x minus 2 and the right side simplifies to x plus 8. Now we can subtract x from both sides of the equation and add 2 to both sides of the equation so that we get 6x is equal to 10. Now we can divide both sides by 6 to get x is equal to 10 6, but that can be reduced to 5 thirds. We can check our solution by plugging back into the original equation for x. On the left side, we'll have the cube root of the quantity 7 times 5 thirds minus 2. And on the right side, we have the cubed root of x, which is 5 thirds plus 8. And we can simplify the left side. 7 times 5 thirds is 35 over 3 minus 2. And on the right side, we have the cubed root of 5 over 3 plus 8. When you add the fraction 5 thirds to 8, you can convert 8 to an equivalent fraction with the common denominator. And since 8 is the same thing as 24 over 3, 5 over 3 plus 8 is 29 over 3. So on the right side, we have the cube root of 29 over 3. And on the left side, we have the cube root of the fraction minus 2. You get a common denominator. 2 is the same thing as 6 thirds, so 35 thirds minus 6 thirds is 29 thirds. So on the left side and the right side, we end up with the same radical, the cubed root of 29 over 3. So we know that x equals 5 thirds is a solution to that radical equation. In this example, we're going to solve using the Pythagorean theorem. A triangle has sides of length 12 meters and 16 meters and you want to find the length of the hypotenuse. Well we use A, B, and C to represent the legs A and B of a right triangle and C is the hypotenuse. By using the Pythagorean theorem we know that the leg squared plus leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. 
or a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, where a and b are both the legs, and c, the hypotenuse, is always the longest side of a right triangle. Now, since we know um, a and b, we don't know c, we can use a variable to represent that unknown side. And we can plug that back into our Pythagorean theorem, plug in our known values to get a squared, which is 12 squared, plus b squared, or 16 squared, is equal to c squared, or x squared. Now we can simplify, then solve for x. 12 squared is 144, plus 16 squared is 256, that's equal to x squared. And then we get 400 is equal to x squared. And then the way we're going to solve this, we could either use, um, it's a quadratic and we can factor it, or we could um, take the square root of both sides. Since we've practiced the factoring techniques, let's go ahead and use that method of subtracting 400 from both sides. And we get zero is equal to x squared minus 400. Now this is a difference of two squares, so we can factor this as zero equals x minus 20 and x plus 20. And by using the zero factor property, we can set x minus 20 is equal to zero and x plus 20 is equal to zero. On the uh, left side, or the first factor equal to zero, we get x equals 20, and here we get x equals negative 20. We wanna make sure that our answer makes sense for this problem. It would make sense that the length of the hypotenuse is 20 meters, but it wouldn't make sense that the length of the hypotenuse is negative 20 meters. So that's an extraneous solution. Our answer here is that the hypotenuse is 20 meters long. And you can always check that by plugging it back into the original equation. 12 squared plus 16 squared does equal 20 squared. In this example, a triangle has a hypotenuse of length 25 centimeters and one leg of length 15 centimeters. Find the length of the other leg. We'll use the, a triangle set up with A and B as legs of the right triangle, where A is unknown, we'll use X to represent that measurement. B is 15 centimeters and the hypotenuse C is 25 centimeters. Using the Pythagorean theorem, where leg squared plus leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared, or A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, we can plug in our known quantities. A is unknown, but we use an X to represent that unknown quantity. So we have X squared plus B squared, which would be 15 squared, is equal to C squared, or 25 squared. Now we can simplify this equation, X squared plus 225, 15 squared is 225, and 25 squared is 625. Then by subtracting 200, oh, actually we could subtract 625 from both sides so that we can get a quadratic equation that's equal to zero to get x squared minus 400 is equal to zero. Again, this looks like the factors of the previous problem, x minus 20 and x plus 20 is equal to zero. So we get x equals 20 or negative 20. And the only one that would make sense in this particular example is that x is a positive 20 centimeters long. It would not make sense that the length of the side of the leg, other leg is negative 20 centimeters long. You can always check your work by plugging that back into the original equation. 20 squared plus 15 squared does equal 25 squared. In this example, a kite is secured to a rope that is tied to the ground. A breeze blows the kite so that the rope is taut while the kite is directly above a, above a flagpole that is 30 feet from where the rope is staked down. Find the altitude of the, of the kite if the rope is 110 feet long. So by using the information given in this problem, we know that the, the kite is directly above the flagpole that's 30 feet from where the rope is tied down. So the length of this part, side B, of the right triangle is 30 feet. 
We also know, know that the rope is 110 feet long. So that's the hypotenuse of the right triangle, is C. The, what we want to do is find the altitude, which is A. That's our missing quantity. We can use the Pythagorean theorem because we know A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. And um, we know that A is our unknown quantity. We can use an X to represent that. X squared plus B squared, that's 30 squared, is equal to C squared, or 110 squared. We can simplify this equation by um, squaring to get X squared plus 30 squared, which is 900, is equal to 110 squared, which is at one, uh, 12,100. Now we can subtract 900 from both sides to get x squared is equal to 11,200. Now 11,200 is not a perfect square, so we wouldn't be able to necessarily use a difference of two squares to factor and set this equal to zero. But what we can do is we can take the square root of both sides so that we get x is equal to the square root of 11,200 and that is approximately as a decimal 105.83. So for our answer we can say that the altitude of the kite is 105.83 feet high. And you can check this by using the Pythagorean theorem using that when you do enter a decimal since that is a rounded value into you'll get something very very close you won't get exact by rounding by plugging that back into the a in the Pythagorean theorem but it will be very close so the the kite is 105.83 feet high